Hi, welcome to my DIY making a stained glass and metal half lampshade. This lampshade is made from an existing frame that I bought at a Goodwill store. First of all, I remove the, the original covering that came on the shade. It's pretty easy and it, it gives you a nice armature to work off of because the original frame is quite strong um, if you buy a metal frame. It's quite strong and it's a good thing to work off of. So using a pair of household scissors, you can quite easily strip it bare. So this is my frame. I then covered up all the metal with copper foil. I use seven 30 seconds inch copper foil and just wrapped it around the frame to, to make it so that I can solder too. I bought all these different shapes. You can get them on Amazon or AliExpress or lots of other places. There's metal shapes. Um, they come in all different sizes and, and types. And then I'm using copper wire. This happens to be, I believe, 24 gauge copper, copper wire. Sometimes I use 26, whatever I can find. I don't want it to be too thick because you want to be able to wrap it pretty easily. And I have quite a number of minutes dedicated to showing how I attached these metal shapes. So when you get tired, just fast forward past this section. But as you can see, I, I wrap the wire around and then I tighten them with needle nose pliers. So I like them nice and snug. It can be difficult to figure out exactly what shape should go where. So it's a good idea to have a, a nice variety. The silver ones ended up working quite nicely when I was soldering. The darker colored ones, I'm not really sure what coating they put on them, but it was a little trickier to get them to accept solder. See, this is a, uh, looks like 26 gauge wire I'm using. So it's almost like sewing. You're just going through the little holes that come with the, the metal and just wrapping them around your shade armature. There is a kind of a top side and a bottom side to these uh, metal shapes that you buy, but you can decide how you want to do it. You can even cut them like I just did with just a pair of basic shears. They cut very easily. So yeah, I usually like to anchor one piece, one end of the wire pretty 
securely by wrapping it around a number of times and then start my sewing um, after that. Now I'm going to solder over all these wires and metal shapes that I'm putting on. So I kind of, I kind of don't mind if they're not perfectly um, symmetrically sewed on. This look is kind of a, a chunky vintage uh, metal style, I guess I would call it. It's not, it's not really slick and um, streamlined. It, you'll, you'll see when it's done. Now this time I wanted this, this little leafy shape to be a little bit smaller. You don't have to start in the corners like I'm doing. See, I can even bend it to get the curve of the shade. But um, it's easier if you start in the corners because that's where you have the most support with the, with the shade frame. And I basically kept adding many, many, many pieces. Um, throughout the process, even later on when I was um, adding wire and some crystals and some beads, I would go back and add a few more of these little metal shapes. Yes, this is a very time consuming project. So I usually do it when I'm sitting there watching TV or something, I'll work on the wiring part because it is, it is kind of tedious, but it's, it's also fun. See, I'm kind of using needle nose pliers to help me get that wire into the next section. I added some 14 gauge copper wire that I kind of bent in swirls and tied those on also. You can also see that I added some crystals. Those colored octagonal ones are the ones you'd get for um, chandeliers. So you can look up chandelier crystals and they, they come in all different colors. The other beads are on the upper left-hand corner there. Those are just clear beads. I, you can get them in different sizes. I also got some little sun shapes like that one that I'm attaching right there. When you're buying pieces of metal that you want to attach to your projects, Try to get ones that are not coated because you want to be able to cover everything with solder probably if you want to um, 
get put patina on it, you'll need to be able to cover them with solder. These are some copper flat washers. They're just bare washers. I got a little box of them and they come in all different sizes. They're, they're nice to use because they're perfectly round and they're sturdy, obviously, because they're washers. And then you can attach crystals or glass globs to them later on. So when I attach things on, I just left the end of the wire kind of just sticking there still on the, um, on the frame. And then I could use it when I have something nearby. Obviously, I didn't have an extra wire here, so I'm adding a little piece to attach my washer. And here again, I just ordered these washers, I think, on Amazon. They come in all different sizes. The insides of these washers are probably like around 12 millimeters, and they probably go up to about 20, or maybe a little bit less than that. I also, as you can see, when I made my wire loops all over the place, some of those loops are actually circles, and I will be attaching glass globs and crystals to those too. You can see there on the left, there's a, um, there was some brass wire that I used. So, so brass works too. You can use brass wire um, cause that takes solder really, really easily. Just make sure it's uncoated wire. And once it's all soldered together, it is going to be quite strong, but you want to do a lot of loops now because you don't want it to fall apart when you're trying to add other pieces to it. So that's why I wrap it around like three or four times each, each time I'm attaching one piece to another. Most of the video in this particular YouTube is at eight times um, the actual speed. So you can tell that it's very time consuming because even at eight times, it looks like it takes forever. So that was like a little end nippers that I have that are really handy to cut the ends off when you don't want to just leave them hanging. And especially where you think you're going to be attaching crystals or flat globs, you will want to press the, um, the wire loops pretty flat because you, it's easier to solder the, um, the glass globs when you don't have an uneven surface. I really like these little star um, flowers. I don't know what you want to call them. These little um, designs that I was using that are like little 
starbursts. They're just kind of fun. Now, one thing I did notice was you can see I'm, I'm putting beads on right now. And unfortunately, one of the beads that I'm putting on ended up being plastic. So they did end up melting, which was really a bummer. Um, it's They're really small, so it wasn't that noticeable. But I think I'm going to be extra careful that the beads are not plastic. Those, those beads actually are the ones that came off the original lampshade. So it's kind of fun to have all those beads, but not that they were plastic. I also did a lot of stringing of beads onto wires to create some of the fills between the different items. Then I got to soldering the project. So I covered everything with a coat of solder. I used this 6040 solder and a gel flux. I like using the gel flux because it tends to not slip off the project. So I usually try to tack this glob on to a couple of spots and then fill in any areas where it's touching any piece of wire. I limited myself to clear red, amber, and green um, beads and globs. Now I know that doesn't sound like I limited myself much, but I did, um, I am avoiding any purples, pinks, and blues in this project. And you have to make some decision. I mean, you could use every color there is, but I wanted to try to keep it somewhat limiting. So most of the globs that I'm adding now are those round glass globs and then I foiled the edges of the globs with um with my 7 16 black backed foil. Most of the time I cut, especially for these big globs, I cut the foil lengthwise in half so it's not quite as thick. And then for the smaller globs, I cut the, um, the foil in thirds. Now, because the foil is just wrapped around and stuck with the adhesive from the, um, from the foil, they're not terribly well attached. So you still have to be pretty careful that it's still somewhat delicate. Um, you could use the full width of the foil and actually wrap around the front and the back, but then you're going to have even a bigger seam around the globs than I have now. Some of those, like the, that one I'm putting on right there is, it's, it, you'll find it on Amazon as a cabochon. It's people put stickers or colored pictures behind them and then they make jewelry with them. They come in all different sizes and they're flat on one side and then convex on the other. So they're like a little dome. And they're really nice because you can get them in all different sizes. I usually get them uh, maybe four, usually six millimeter up to probably around 20. 
I say millimeter because that's what they're sold at. They're not sold by inches. Sometimes they'll convert it for you, which is nice if you're like me and understand Imperial better than metric, but a lot of this stuff is measured in metric. That yellow in the corner, in the right-hand corner, that's my fan, my exhaust fan that's sucking up the fumes. That's another reason why I like to use this gel flux is it's not quite as smoky as, um, as the liquid flux I've tried. Now that um, big glob right in the middle, right that I'm using right now, that, that metal, I had to actually cut the center out of it because it was this, it was this large shape and it was just too much. So I cut the center out and I'm going to put something, probably a cabochon in, in there. I wish I could find a place to buy like colored cabochons, but you know, I mean, obviously people wouldn't use them as cabochons because you can't really see through them completely. They're translucent, but they're not transparent if they were, um, a colored glass, but it would be kind of nice. I do sometimes use flat, um, glass as circles. You can buy them as triangles, circles, leaves, different shapes like that. But for this project, I wanted the dome look. I didn't want to have, have the glass to be flat. So basically every washer circle that I put on it, yeah, there, there I'm adding one to the middle there. Um, every loop I made, every washer, I found some kind of st um, glass glob or, or cabochon to just fill those circles. I didn't have to do a lot of back soldering with this project. Back When I say back soldering, I mean turning the project over and soldering from the other side. I did a little bit, but um, since most of these glass globs are kind of set on top of the project, um, they were pretty, pretty well attached. I didn't have to like go in and and solder from the back. Right now I'm going around and I'm, I'm trying to solder any area that still has bare copper. And between the beads, it's really hard to get solder to go because I put the beads really close together. I guess if you strung your beads with lots of gaps, you could get solder in between them. So I turned it over to see if there was any other areas that needed to be soldered that the copper was showing. When I covered all the metal with solder, yes, I did do the back also. So everything is completely covered. Kind of hard to see right there with that fan in the way.
So this is what it looked like after it was washed. So it's all soldered up on both sides. Now I'm going to use a black patina to color it. I'm just showing you what it looks like on a piece of paper. Then I put plastic. I have this sheet of clear plastic that I put under the product before I spray it with patina. So I'm using this Novum Black Patina on Novacon. I never know how they pronounce it, but anyways, I use that black patina and I put it into a spray bottle. This makes it so that it's quickly, evenly distributed, and I don't think I really waste much by using the spray method. So I put a piece of plastic underneath it. It really has to be fresh patina in order to work. I do use the drip drips that fall onto the plastic to get places I missed, but um, once it's activated, it doesn't really react again. So even though I'm using my toothbrush there and going over areas that weren't coated, it's really the, the fresh stuff that you spray on is, is what really works the best. I just hate wasting it, so I, I give it a try to try to use up some of the, some of the waste. Yes, definitely wear gloves when you do this. I don't want to handle the patina stuff without a glove on. And I kind of scrub it in as I'm putting it on here. So I get all the little crevices. Try to look at it from different directions. I'm soaking up the excess there. Let it sit a little while and then go rinse it off in the sink. So this is what it looks like when it's done. I'm trying to get some of it off. Some of the water. See, it kind of has that vintage wiry look. With lots of intricate shapes and designs. Now, right now, I am cleaning the glass. I have Q-tips and paper towels and I'm trying to get the glass to be clean because a lot of the patina and um, 
and flux is still preventing the glass from being shiny and clear. So I use Q-tips, I use little pieces of cotton on tweezers, whatever it takes to get into all the crevices and try to clean off any gunk and make those, those glass globs shine. I also try to get the crystals, the, the beads, to be shiny. You don't have to be too delicate with this. I mean, yeah, they're somewhat delicate, but you, you do need to um, put a little pressure and to get them clean. I'm not using any chemical. I'm just, just using the Q-tip. Now I'm ripping off a piece of the, the Q-tip and using it with tweezers to get into any area that I couldn't get with just the Q-tip. And you can use a paper towel or, you know, whatever you have. Now you still end up with um, a pretty dull um, patina look. And I wanted it to have a little bit more shine to the black. So after I got the glass pretty clean, I used this Mother's Brazilian cleaner polish or stuff and just rubbed it on top of all the patina. And it really did help make it shinier. And don't worry if you get some on the glass. It doesn't, you might have to buff the glass up again, but it doesn't hurt the glass. Yeah, I put some in a little cup and then I s proceeded to spill the cup onto the table, but luckily I had a, a covering on the table. It really doesn't take much of this polish or stuff. And here's my finished lamp. I need to find a better base to put it on. That one's kind of big for it. But thank you for watching. 
and please subscribe and I'll have some other videos coming up um, when I have another project done. Thank you.